If, it, if it's what lights you up, light it up. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, women who carry their babies everywhere, but these aren't their children. They're lifelike dolls. Oh, God. It's in the process of being reborn. Right. Do you think you're too old to play with dolls? That's just creepy to me. The difference between your hobby and an obsession. This thing's not going to wet on me, is it? Plus. I'm backstage watching our special correspondent, comedian and author Stephanie Wilde Taylor, as she shows some of our audience a doll that is so lifelike, people mistake it for a real baby. It's part of a new craze called reborning, where women say they obsess over infant dolls that look like human babies. They dress them, shop for them, take them out. Our show today is about obsessions and how they affect our lives. Reborning is just one of the obsessions we're going to talk about today. Sometimes otherwise rational people can get completely obsessed with dolls, dogs, people, that it totally takes over their life. Maybe they're focused on appearance, weight, money, revenge. Obsession is the front end of OCD. Think about that. So today we're answering the question, when does habit, passion, or hobby cross the line and start getting in the way? Start making your list. You may learn something about you today. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Some say it's a hard life, but it's hard for us all. Always hold on. Intent. Always be strong. Reach out. Five, four, three, two, one. What is an obsession? Is it harmless or does it dominate your life? Now, how is it different from, say, a passion or a habit or even what we call a quirk? Well, today we're going to get to the bottom of what they are, what they aren't, why we have them, and what purpose they serve. Now, some of y'all thought this baby was real, right? Who saw the baby? Did you think it was real? Because we had you on camera talking to it. <laughs> we had you talking to the baby. A little bit. A little bit. I mean, y'all, they, they really are real looking, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, well, up next, move over Beanie Babies. There's a new craze in town called reborning. Women who take plain looking dolls and turn them into lifelike babies. These things cost thousands of dollars. Is it an obsession or a hobby? We're going to find out when we come back. about how normal, rational people, and by that I mean people that, I mean they have jobs, they have lives, they, they do good things, and then they get caught up in their devotion for animals or inanimate objects that you, you have to wonder if it's hobby or if it's crossed over to obsession. Now we heard about a group of women with an unusual interest in collecting and creating dolls so incredibly lifelike that they're called reborns. Now this season, we're having some special correspondents report from the field. This was a perfect story to send comedian Stephanie Wilder-Taylor to the suburbs. She's the author of Sippy Cups Are Not For Chardonnay and Other Things I Learned As A New Mom. Take a look. So what is it about reborning that 
people get obsessed with. They look like real children. This has taken doll collecting to to a a, in a completely different direction yes. and become this craze mm -hmm. that people can't get enough of these right. babies that look like babies. Right, and some people so that, make them to look like they're children. Do you think that's a little weird? I think it could be if you don't have control. But you have control. Yeah. Okay, this one scares me. It's just yes. lucky staring at me. Go to sleep. That's Brielle. She's hefty. Now this is? Vinny. Hey, Vinny. That little one's name is Ryan. And the reason that I was attracted to him was because he reminds me so much of my grandson. A funny story about these three guys right here, what we call them, the three Jesuses. Ooh. Happy Jesus, sleeping Jesus, not sure he wants to be here, Jesus. That one yes. looks like he has a little mascara. We just finished our basement, and in the process of finishing the basement, we decided to put in like a work oh. studio. So you're actually at the christening. So this is a room that you created just for the dolls. This area here is. These are actual kits. Oh my God. Okay, do you see anything wrong with this picture? That looks like a horror movie. These have not been painted, they have no eyes, they have nothing. This guy's getting his body today. He hasn't had a body for a, a long time. Okay, did this, I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, you know, this is about keeping it real. That's just creepy to me. It, it, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, it's just creepy to me. I, I'm not saying it's sick or anything, but just to me, it's creepy. Yeah, it was creepy to me. I mean, when I first went there, I was concerned just from the name alone. I mean, Rebornners, that sounds like a cult. Yeah. yeah My friends were concerned. Doesn't sound right. No. Doesn't sound right. And, I, and, and the fact is, th there's nothing untoward going on here or anything. These are no. dog collectors. They just they just really get into it. But I don't know, it just seems kind of odd to me. Well, they, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I talked with Catherine. She's such a nice person and she seems really down to earth. But then you go into her house and she has in two rooms entirely devoted just for the dolls. One is the feminine room and one is the masculine room. And there's like 20 real life looking dolls in each room just kind of staring at you. Just kind of looking yeah, around. Yeah, well, I, mean, I guess it just wouldn't be right to keep boys and girls together. Apparently so not. I mean, but rooms. these are full-on nurseries for babies, uh, and yeah. sh there's not a baby in her house. Uh, well, Catherine says that she is addicted to reborns. Now, she hosts a party with friends who also collect and create reborners. They call it Doll Day. I love her. Isn't she cute? She's precious. Right, Brielle? She's heavy, I know. She weighs about seven pounds. I Twelve. Hi. This is Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Hi. how are you? She Hi. is the Dr. Phil show. He couldn't join us, so she is to find out exactly what we do today. Well, Excellent. good. Here, have one. <laughs> have you ever known anybody to formula feed their newborn? No. no. Or reborn? No. no. But because breast is best. Right. <laughs> True. <laughs> now, who's this? This is Michael. And so this is, and his hair, little Donald Trump mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. So this one went into the Cracker Barrel, and she got quite a response, actually. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but she was cheap, date. She didn't eat anything. <laughs> so the reborning is what you do to the baby. Mm -hmm. So this, this right now is just a doll. It's in the process of being reborn. Right. Sometimes when you're just goofing around, like do you rock them and sure. sing to them? And sure, I think it's a natural reaction for a woman when she's holding a baby in her arms to rock. I find myself doing that. That doesn't make me psychotic. I yearn for when my day, like the days when my children were younger because I enjoyed being a mother so much and I enjoyed watching them and the little expressions in their faces. Of course you miss those days and you want to recapture those days. Okay, um, you, so this is... This is one of them. This is one of them. Does it have a name? It has a name. It was given by the artist Trevor. I didn't have a problem with that name, so I left it that name. Okay, when you move its arm from underneath, it yeah, makes it, it looks sort of... look like it's kind of uh, real. Yes. Well, I think the sleeping ones look more real anyways. I think the ones that... We discussed this the other day. Yes. The ones that don't blink can get a little airy. So I sort of prefer him sleeping myself because I think it just looks like a child at peace, sleeping. So but Catherine told me that some people actually want their eyes open because if I'm going to pay that much money for a doll, I want that thing looking at me. Right. 
<laughs> yeah. True. But, so do you rock the baby? Like your friend was saying, I'm not psychotic, but no, I rock. No, 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 no. Actually, uh, it's funny. I see it more as an art form. I mean, because these things start out so plain. It's like when you saw the heads, the gruesome little heads and bodies that were in the shelves. I think it's an art form. I really do. And the reason I brought this one is because this is not one I personally made. I had yeah. great respect for the woman who did make this. Um, that's one I did make. And, yeah. and mine's more of a, I, I think, more of a passion than really an obsession, to be honest. I have two rooms, but they also started out as my, children, my grandchildren's nurseries. Yeah. So it was real convenient when I made another room for them, a playroom, to go, oh, I have a feminine room and a masculine room, so I'll put boy dolls in one room and girl dolls in another room. Do you think you're too old to play with dolls? Yeah, probably. We'll be right back. What some people would say, and I mean it's true, right. people that become... Uh, really engaged with like pets or dolls or whatever is that it's just really low demand right the, the, you don't have to really do anything you don't have to engage you don't have to right. interact and so it's a regressive sort of thing to a really low demand relationship so you don't have to engage in a healthy relationship but the truth is you have friends yeah. and family and you're engaged at every level right because yes. I, I have to tell you as I see this I, I think some people can get over involved sure, in this kind absolutely. of stuff you don't strike me that way no. at all this to me and, and this is what we were talking about before the the difference between an obsession and a hobby now when we were talking to you you used the word obsessed to describe yourself but i think you used it in kind of a lay term like you're really into them i'm that over sounds top to me on like, everything really but that sounds to me right. like a hobby it is a hobby like a passion because for something to be an obsession that means that it involuntarily crowds into your consciousness, pushes other things out of the way, and you can't think, you can't act, you can't do things. That's what obsession is. You see that in obsessive compulsives where they have to wash their hands all the time for a sense of control. And so they can't go fix dinner because they're busy washing their hands. They can't go to the movie with their friends because they're busy washing their hands. It's so intrusive. That doesn't seem at all what's going on with you. This seems like a habit. It's, it's a, a hobby. It's a, yeah, it's a hobby and a passion. And, and I have to tell you, the responses you get, I, when I purchase the doll, occasionally you, you shouldn't leave. I mean, we don't know yet, but you shouldn't leave them in sunlight for any length of time. And if I have one, I've actually had an incident where I came to my car and this couple were getting ready to call the police because they thought I left a sleeping baby in my car. Yeah, can I see the, sure. see the, see, see and the so baby? now I have to, if I ever have one I've purchased or I'm taking to someone to deliver, mm -hmm. I have to take it in with me because I can't afford to have the windows fixed on my car. Wow, that is real looking when you look at it. And actually that's the way I held our babies too. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't know, their heads would bob all around and stuff. <laughs> Okay, but that's, and it's like the right weight and everything. Right, right? yeah. I mean, really, a lot, of, a lot of thought goes into this. I mean, people, you know, they, they figure the balance of the weight and they look at the skin <laughs> texture. And, you know, we were showing her the other day. They looked really... Some of them look very real, but the, but the creepy thing, I got to tell you, the creepy thing is, and I think you would agree with me, <laughs> when their eyes are closed and they're just laying in a cradle, sure. they look dead. Sure. I mean, they don't... Once you kind of get over the momentary, it looks real, it's yeah. like a house full of dead babies. Not to be really morbid, right. but I well, mean, doesn't that so of Doll collecting's been going on for years and right. years and years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty of these. They're really yeah. low maintenance in the long run. Well, how much have you spent on these things, roughly? Are you talking dolls in general or this reborns? This is not an essay question. Well, I mean, there's a difference. <laughs> no, I mean, how much have you put into this hobby? Okay, but am I going to be on your segment for divorcees when I convey this? <laughs> Maybe, but there won't no. be a custody fight. I'm kidding. No, true. <laughs> no, um, probably between the paints, you know, the paint, the, the hair that's really not too inexpensive, but you don't use a lot. And. Aren't we talking 50 grand here? No, no, no. Catherine. No, 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 no. You told me. Between 50 grand. No. 
You need to show the whole thing. Don't I lie. said between forty to fifty thousand total on dolls in the last fourteen years. Okay, well that's what I'm right. saying. It's for forty, oh, fifty grand. For dolls, not this particular kind. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well no, well, I, But that's I, including antique cradles and cribs and high chairs and she puts diapers on the babies. Oh sure. They fill the clothes out. This is really a hobby. Right. For y'all. And and you get joy out of it. Right. And it doesn't interfere with your life. It doesn't intrude yeah. on anything. Yeah. I mean, I sat with all of them. They're very nice, normal women. But it, to me, it did seem like when you told me that when you go to a doll show and you see a doll that's you know a couple of grand, and you ha you kind of make like a soul connection with it because it looks slightly to the left of another one that you have, and you just can't, you want to no. leave, but you have to go back and get it. It's like almost Not like a you're adopting connection. a baby. I said you, you'll go out and you'll pick up a doll and you'll go, no, I don't need that. And then you might come back and go, why does that doll remind me of something? And then you might gravitate toward it because you go, oh my golly, that reminds me of a little boy I had to babysit. Okay, I vote hobby on this. Y'all vote hobby or, or if, if you say hobby, raise your hand. If Yay. you say obsession, raise your hand. A uh, few of you think, uh-uh, I think it's a hobby. Thank you. And I hope you continue to enjoy Love it. It looks fun to me. Thank I mean, you. I wouldn't do it, but if, it, if right. it's what lights you up, light it up. <laughs> well, I want to thank all of my guests today, and thanks to reborn artist Judy Plant for loaning us one of her reborn babies. It was fun to watch people react to that. I want to say thank you to Macy's and BlueFly.com for a known as new look. Now, Whatever you think about an obsession you might have, as long as it's not disruptive to your life, it brings you peace, calmness, joy, then there's nothing wrong with it. As long as it's not disruptive to your life, it brings you peace, calmness, joy, then there's nothing wrong with it.